So um, welcome again, everybody. We're back uh, after some delay. Diego had a lot of traveling to do. Uh, so now we're, we're back. We're going to do one this week. Uh, we're going to take next week off because Diego and I are going to be in Florida uh, doing an Island Door camp down there. And then after that, uh, we'll be back in business and hopefully do the last four or so, I think. It might be three. Um, so uh, welcome. Welcome back. And before we really get started, I want to say thank you again to Scholars Portal for uh, allowing us to use their infrastructure for this. It's 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 awesome. And then welcome again, again to everybody. Um, so today uh, we're going to be doing uh, another a follow-up lesson on microservices. So if you can remember back to last time, uh, Diego did an introduction of, of the, the microservices that we're using in the, the dev branch for Qua right now. And that's basically the future of, of where we're going. So today's lesson will be a little bit more hands-on and in-depth and kind of walk you through uh, what we're doing there. Um, so theoretically, if you wanted to start contributing, um, this would be a good place to start. Uh, we'll be working on this for the next little while, <clears throat> and it'll be the focus of our sprints. Um, that said, uh, before I hand it over to Diego, I'll be monitoring uh, or moderating the chat. So if you have any questions or you want Diego to stop or anything like that, just let me know, and, and I will unmute myself and unceremoniously uh, interrupt him. Um, so, uh, welcome back, Diego, and I'll hand it over to you to another awesome lesson. Thank you very much, Nick. Hello, people. I'm back. Um, this lesson will be like getting really hands-on on microservices. We will start uh, looking back shortly on what we saw in the last uh, session. Uh, lesson. It was like part one, and there was a lot of stuff there, basically. So if you have like some time right now, just browse it to the last uh, slideshows so you can get started on what Silex is and how Composer works and that. Because basically what we're going to do today is a very quick intro on how to use the existing microservices. And then we'll start building a new microservice. The idea behind this is to get you contributing back to Island or Cloud. Uh, I think we have told people and community about this a lot in the forums. But we need your help. We need your ideas. We need your code. And I think this is a good way to get you started uh, building from scratch a microservice. And from scratch means basically copy and paste a lot. So it's not difficult at all. And if you need to stop me or to make questions, that's fine because this will be like a lot of code, a lot of technical stuff. And so we can make it as as possible and as low as needed. Okay, can you all see my screen, right? Well, the last time we saw what are these microservices and why we use them. Uh, very short on this, microservices are very slim PHP services that are built to make some type of Fedora for interact hey, yeah sorry yeah yeah can you yeah can you click present mode sorry because it's it's small i guess I'm on there your slides uh can you see that hopefully that works yeah yeah there you go perfect sorry okay so muy bien muchas gracias Okay, these microservices serve a very specific purpose. The idea behind this is to make Fedora 4 interaction simpler, to give different PHP services very specific purposes instead of having this big tuke that tries to solve everything. We split 
different functionality into different services. That said, uh, we saw last time the microservices we have, how they're basically built, and how they are interacting with the main uh, uh, PHP classes and, and basically not microservices, but service providers named Tuyo and other related to that. We also saw how PHP is becoming a modern language, so we have namespaces and there are a lot of stuff there. We saw also some basic of Composer. Composer is and will be our package manager, our dependency manager, and we'll be using this a lot. That also means understanding some of how stuff of PSR4 style autoloading. And we had like this very quick intro to Silex. Uh, Silex is a whole world, basically, but a very simple world to deal with. Um, it's a very clever framework that allows us to manage most of our HTTP REST API needs. And it's built around the idea of having roads that we can call directly. And those roads invoke internally, using the parameters we're passing, controllers. And those controllers do the hard work for us. The idea behind Silex is basically we can build a whole application using one file, but since we are very, very PHP, Islandora complex people, we made it multiple files. But don't worry about that, it has a reason why we're doing this. So, what we'll see today, the first time very shortly, and the first part very shortly, and then more in deep, is basically how our microservices work. And then we will go into creating a new microservice, a basic image one. That doesn't mean I will build the whole microservices microservice for you. Basically, I will build a skeleton around this. I will show how most of the code is basically reusing what we already did, and how we can then extend this to have, like, in one week or two weeks, a full basic image service that can be then connected to Drupal and basically have the foundation for a new content solution pack. Okay, how do we use these microservices in cloud? So, basically, right now, everything is stored... Sorry. Everything... Oh, back. There. Okay, everything right now lives inside the Sprint 002 uh, uh, branch. And if you go there, you will see there's a service folder. And inside that service folder, there are three other folders. One named resource service, one named transaction service, and one named collection service. Those are the service we already built, refined, and testing right now. The resource service is the core service around everything. So it's a wrapper around the Fedora Forestful API, so it deals with CRUD. It uses UIDs to identify base resources. If you remember, we were talking about how Fedora 4 uses full paths to identify a resource. But since we are coming from the previous Islandora world, and we're also trying to match what we have on Drupal to Fedora 4, we make a mapping between a UID and a real path. Basically, you don't have to deal with these long, very complex paths. We assign UIDs to each resource inside Fedora 4 as an RDF property. The transaction service manages the batch operations. They were known until a few weeks ago as transactions, but they're not really full asset transactions. That means they don't fully comply with the concept of transactions, so we name them now batch operations. Basically, transaction service deals with starting one of these internally batch operations transactions, TX, named that way, and once you start one, everything that is built inside the transaction is handled as 
a snapshot, temporary snapshot of an operation. So you start transaction, you start adding resources, but those resources only live inside the transaction. And at the end, when you're ready, you commit that one. And it builds a batch around everything that was done, and then it goes into disk. We are right now not using this a lot, because basically if two people start a transaction using the same resources, one can overwrite the other one. But that's another talk. And the collection service is a more high level service. Basically, it deals with CRU. The D is missing there for PCDM collections. I don't know if you are aware of what PCDM is or how PCDM works, but right now PCDM is an ongoing effort to build a common ontology for Alan Dora and Hydra. And basically it's built around the Aura concept. So we are building aggregations. And that means that our resources inside Fedora, the ones that we really care for, become PCDM classes. And we have two basic ones, the PCDM collection that mimics an old Alandora collection, and we have a generic PCDM object. And those PCDM objects can be a lot of different stuff depending on the higher semantics you apply. This collection service is very interesting because it basically creates a collection for you. It creates the LDP container needed for that, in a specific and indirect one. And then it also adds proxies that link existing PCDM objects or resources to this PCDM collection. That's, that said, right now uh, Jared is working a lot with this one. And it's also a foundation to build new services. So we will use this one to create the image one. So you probably see a lot of missing stuff here. We don't have like the large image service, the image service, the book service, the newspaper service, or whatever other type of service you want to make the old solution pack mimic inside Fedora 4. We are building them. We are also waiting for your interaction on this. And we also need to define a lot of stuff related to content modeling. So that's it. We are working. OK. <clears throat> using the services. Basically, it's a very simple process. You just clone the Sprint 002 branch. I named this the target, in this case, Alandor Cloud Micro. You go into that, you go into install, and you just execute Vagrant app. And then you get a coffee. If you don't have this running right now, it will take like an hour to go up. This has been handled by the project right now, having a new way of installing. That will be official, I don't know when, Nick, but I think right now. Uh, it's based on Docker and Ansible, and it will be a lot faster. But right now, this is the way. When you make this Vagrant app, basically it installs the full Alandora Claw environment, but it also starts these little services at port 8282. There's a very simple way of testing the services. For example, this one creates a collection with Slack first collection, and we have first and post, as we saw in the first sessions. A header, the Slack, same as Fedora 4 API uses, because these are wrappers. And then we have this endpoint, internally 82, Islandora collection. Well, this will give you something like this back. If you look at this, there's a location header that says, after the 201 created, that says 82, Islandora, resource, and an UID. Interesting. Basically, it's telling you that you can now access this new resource that is a VCDM collection directly on that path that uses another end path resource provided by the resource service. 
and it also creates here's a link inside that a members resource that's the indirect container that will point using proxies to each member we add I won't go into indirect containers again because it's basically the most confusing stuff around LDP but the idea the basic idea about LDP indirect containers is that you can have multiple objects belonging to different sorry the same object belonging to different collections even when LDP is a one by one containment why and how basically because we need a way of putting the same PCDOM object in different collections as we did in Fedora in Fedora 3 and Alandora and to do this the how is to use proxies okay so magically this will create a PCDM collection object at the Fedora root it will add this indirect container named members and it will also assign a UID to the PCDM collection that one so you don't have to access directly the path that is created basically I'm giving it here a first collection slack but that doesn't mean that Fedora 4 will respect that if there's already a first collection inside it will create a very long path but we don't care about that we get an UID which is pretty cool okay using the same idea I will use the path the link I'm getting back here's localhost 82 Alandora resource to fetch what this PCDM collection has inside and it will give me back this whole RDF it's very long but basically if you look inside this you will see that it has this predicate ESL has URN with our UID that we can use to fetch stuff directly from SparkQL and we have also an NFO UID that is a legacy one we're using and it says it contains a members one so if you look at this basically what we're doing is to have like a very slim wrapper but smart one that builds all the needed resources and sub resources with just one call <clears throat> a very interesting thing about this collection service is that it uses internally the resource service and the transaction service that means by just invoking one of these services we get all the other functionality and we don't have to rewrite code basically collection service will internally call all the needed resource service calls to build these little blocks like the LDP container and add the members it will also be able to act using the transaction service like start and reuse an existing transaction and commit it at the end and also exposes the endpoints for resource service and transaction services so one service exposes all the other ones so it's basically like a Matryoshka doll those Russian dolls that are one inside the other our architecture is based on this so we have base services that deal with the most deep Fedora 4 system interaction like creating one resource at a time and then we have like this upper level services that invoke multiple times the resource services inside I am going too fast is that okay for you okay so my idea today is to start building a new service with your help of course and I won't finish it here I will leave it open I will add this to to github and if we manage to understand this maybe in two weeks we'll have like this by community build new service that is right now needed and it's also in our roadmap 
So this is not only a demo for you, it will be become really part of the Alandora Cloud environment. Well, this diagram was built by the nice Nick and it makes a lot of sense. And this is basically what we will do during this creation. If you look at this diagram, we have like <coughs> collections and collections and collections and collections. Those are built right now by the collection service. Each one has members in the red container and inside one of these collections linked to the, it via a proxy really lives a new type of object named PCDM object. Sorry, I'm getting something here. Okay, sorry, back. Nick, do, do, do I need to... Oh, okay, sorry. I saw some something jumping in the in the in the chat. Back to this. Okay. Uh, well, this one is our base example. Uh, PCDM has evolved in the last months to something more specific. The PCDM works, and we're discussing how we will this integrate in Alandora. There is a lot of documentation on the IDRA side on this. Little documentation on our side. Uh, what we want to create in this new service is basically a PCDM object, that one, that will LDP contain a direct container named files. This direct container will accept PCDM files there, and those are basically binaries. And we will mark those files using this ontology. They use preservation master file, use service file, and use thumbnail image. And each time we'll add something to files, it will create from the PCDM object to the different binaries a PCDM has file predicate. So it's pretty simple, basically. Uh, there are many ways of handling these binaries. What we'll try to do today is just to add one binary file, if possible. But I will explain how using the same concept that we have on the PCDM collection, we can create a PCDM object and add an indirect container by code. Uh, I don't know if you remember, Fedora has basically two types of resources. It has RDF resources and non-RDF sources. All these red ones are non-RDF sources, basically they are binaries, but each of the non-RDF sources have always a FCR metadata endpoint that allows us to extend the binary, describe it with further RDF. In that place will go the use preservation master file, the use service file, the use thumbnail. I will also expose to you, <laughs> I know the term exposing is correct, maybe I will scare you, um, to a way of handling the derivatives that is not directly PHP, which is good, uh, by using a camel service, a very simple one I built for the Fedora camp and I will show you how this works. So, I hope you are ready with this. Okay, this will get a little bit boring, but bear with me, this is very simple to understand. A Silex app is basically always just an index.php file. And as we saw last time, we have to define a namespace. In this case, we're using Alandora image service. We're using the autoloader provided by Composer. And we have like all these namespaces that are already provided. Okay. This is very simple. It's like 
we define what we're going to use in terms of the libraries that are available using Composer. We define here, this is a default, that time zone, and we start a new application. This is Silex, basically. This is the way we say saying to Silex, hey, this app container will be our new application. Then we have like this way of enabling the book, so we get verbose responses. And then we will start here mounting our different and registering our different services. The first one, this, is base. It's needed to be able to define, mount and create service controllers and service providers. The concept is maybe a little complicated, but the idea is that you can have like this class that provides you with functionality for a route that can be reused and it's based on this interface. This is an interface that has basically two interfaces. I will explain this further. And we will also use the Twig service provider. Twig are, is a template system. We're using it all around our microservices and it's made internally for the Alandora Cloud um, to work with RDF and Spark OL queries building. Uh, the normal use of Twig is basically to build HTML files, but in this case we use the same functionality to build our Spark OL query simpler and also to build our internally RDF simpler. So this is common, and we're using this everywhere. I just changed the image service. It's a copy paste from the collection one. And it lives in source index PHP. Then I will mount our other dependent microservices. Here, I defining an island or a source service provider, and I'm just creating a new instance of the resource service provider. I just register this one and start it. And then I mount the whole service inside slash islandora. That means that every sub mount point that this one provides will be at localhost, in this case 8282 slash islandora slash the other roads that this one provides. Same from the transaction service. I'm still copy past from the OR services, this is the same that we have on the collection service. And then, this is the new stuff. I create a new service. This one will be named Islandora Image Services. And we are creating a new instance of Image Service Provider that hasn't been created yet. It's just a stop. And we register for this Islandora Image Services a new UID generator. And then we mount this new service also on Islandora. Wow, this is big. But this is also copy paste. This is the way we're going to handle everything that comes back from Silex to the user. Basically, on the main app, we have like this view method that says everything that comes back should be returned as a response, nothing more. And after that, we add a new header that says X powered by Alandora Image Rest API, so you know that you're interacting with that service. And then we have error handling that deals with most of the common problems that RDF was wrong, we have an, an exception on the HTTP side, something was not found, and then we have at last the nothing was working, everything is failing one. Still copy past. And finally, app run. Well, if you do this and copy past this, this won't work. Basically because you haven't defined anything for the image service provider. So. Let's create inside source provider, image service provider, sorry, provider app file named image service provider. 
This one will be the real provider. We have a new namespace. We have everything we're going to use and reuse. And then we have this new class, image service provider, that implements two different interfaces. On one side, the service provider interface that will deal with the initialization of this service, and then the controller provider interface that will deal with what happens inside the road. So this is what we have to develop. If you want to stop me, this is the moment. Okay, no, uh, nobody wants to stop me. This is good. Let's go to real code. Okay. I will make this as big as possible. Can you see this big enough? Perfect. So this looks better because it has all these fancy colors so we can follow what is happening here. When you define a new service provider inside Silex and you implement this multiple interface one class, you have to define always a register function and basically it says when we start this one from the index PHP do this there's a thing named dependency injection that is very cool in in the in the Silex and the symphony world that allows you to, to pass full objects and basically the classes and the interfaces into the generation of a new service. And that means if you're sharing the same interface, you can just swap the full system without having to implement, how can I explain this? How, without having to implement a, a different interface for that. Basically, the idea is if I want to swap this UID generator, I can use the internal one provided here or I can pass a new UID generator that has the same interface as the previous one. That means I can basically build a very simple skeleton app that can be fit with different other services that can be also invoked directly, replaced directly, and since they all share the same, the same interface, my real logic doesn't have to care about that. There's a lot of information about uh, dependency injection. I always had trouble explaining this. It's more simple if you go like into documentation and try it yourself. But we're using this indirectly because basically inside Silex everything is swappable. If you look here, the app, the application, is the main application. We're passing the main application into this class, into the register one. And we're using this stuff named containers. Containers are a lazy way of initialization information. We can initialize here the UED generator. For example, if it's not set externally, then use the internal one provided. But this one will never will never be invoked or used in memory until I make a direct invocation. Basically, if I say this, this code is never run until I say, hey, UID generator, generate something for me. Okay, this is the same as in the collection. I'm just copy pasting here. And now we have like the image controller. This is arbitrary. We're just defining that inside the Islandora image controller I will have this new service that is a 
controller itself. And this controller uses the UAD generator. Same for Twitch. I'm passing an external Twitch, but it's not there. I will create an internal tool. And finally, I'm passing the API, and the API is the Chuyu API. And this one depends on the settings I have inside my YAML files. I will show you those YAML files at the end. Same for the triple store. So we have like everything set up to start working with this. Here's the YAML file. Basically, I say if I don't get a config, then get and search for a config. And I will search that config in the config directory. And we have two different types. If app the book is enabled, I will uh, use this one. If not, I will use that one. I parse it and return it. Well, when I call invoke and register originally from the index uh, PHP file, this image service provider, none of this stuff is really run. It will wait until I really need to use it to be invoked and to be run. And also, if I pass different configurations, I preload the app config, then this won't be run, which is very handy. And finally, I have like this function, boot application and nothing more. Part of the main system. This one is part of the controller provider interface, back. This one was part of the service provider interface. The service is the whole stuff that we're starting, okay? And the controller is what happens when you invoke a road. And it has this common functionality, like the connect one, where we define our controllers. And I will have, in this case, and we will extend this in the future, just two different controllers. One that gets a post at slash image something that will invoke internally Islandora image controller create. And then I'm passing some defaults and bending this to a common name that I can use externally. And the same goes for this one. This post will get the same road image and ID. These IDs are UIDs, some other road files, and a file. And this one will add an image. It's invoking this method. And finally, when I'm done defining these different roads, post means I will accept post, there's a get, there's a put, there are different ones. I will just return this whole controllers collection to the main app. Well, you're asking yourself where I'm defining this Islandora image controller create. Oops. It's here. Islandora image controller. And I'm telling it's a new Islandora image service controller image controller. Okay. Let me take a breath. Uh, this will. I need some interaction. Are you still alive there? Very confused. Nothing new. Cool. Perfect, Amanda. If you have some doubts or anything, just ask me because basically to come to this point, we had a lot of 
trying, failing, trying, debugging, and testing again until we came to this configuration. It looks complex. Once you get the basic of this, uh, you will see it's very simple. It's simpler than writing pure PHP, but it has this very strange concept uh, about these containers that are lazily invoked. So it's it looks more than other type of language than PHP. It mimics more like how Ruby, for example, works. Uh, but at the end of the day or the week or the month, it will make a lot of sense to you. Okay, I already created here an image controller file. Let's go into this. So this one has a different namespace. It's an Islandora image service controller. And the class image controller here. gets an UED generator. It has a construct. And it has different functions, public ones, methods, that deal with the whole stuff. Here's the very interesting part. If you look at this, this is not Silex. This is just plain PHP. But it gets some, some injection. So, for example, when I construct this image controller, I'm passing the main Silex application, I'm passing the UID generator, the one I was injecting in the image service provider, and I'm telling that internally it should use this to generate the UIDs. And then I have this public function named create. And create uses application, the same one I'm passing, a request, that is of type request, of type Symfony Component Foundation request, and an ID. Internally, I'm using this TX, which is one of the many parameters you can pass to reuse an existing transaction. We're not going to use that right now. And then I'm parsing here what I'm getting as content. This one uses one library named ACRDF. And ACRDF is one of the few libraries around that can pretty much handle most of the Fedora 4 RDF serialization formats that are around. And what we'll do, what, what we get from here is that we, if we pass anything that is RDF, it will try to get a format, and, and if it can't read it, it will abort and get a message. OK. Now, if we know that we can parse this, so the format exists, we define namespaces in RDF using this same library. We set the PCDM prefix for that ontology. Thank you, Nick. That exactly. We use the NFO one. We use this fake right now one named ISL that will be hopefully soon the official Island Door ontology. And we also set the LDP namespaces. Uh, this is very important because internally Fedora 4 depends on the prefixes you use for your different ontologies. And once you set them inside a resource, Fedora 4 will remember them forever. So if you set the same ontology with different namespace uh, prefixes, it will re uh, have like duplicated data. So since we can't really parse the prefixes from what we're getting, we have to reset them. And those are the ones we need. Then we have a very interesting construct inside Fedora 4 to build RDF. Basically, when we're telling a, a new resource, hey, this RDF predicates belong to you, but you don't exist right now, 
so we have to create you instead of using a full URI because we don't know the URI we use this construct it's basically that type of brackets but in terms of RDF internally on the AC RDF library this is not a valid uh, uh, IRI or URI or anything so what we do here and this is a trick uh, we create a fake URI that gets replaced after everything is done back to this stuff that Fedora 4 understands. Still, we're here on a copy past scenario. You don't have to build this from zero. It will work the same for each new content type we create. And once we have this, we create a new graph. Basically, this will be an empty graph and we will put inside this graph using the path method everything we're getting via the request get content request as we saw here is of type request and type of request means its type of symphony components HTTP foundation request symphony documentation is pretty good so if you search for how these classes are defined and the methods you will see that request and response have a lot of handy methods you can get everything from there from their headers their content uh, using different encodings whatever you want what we're doing, using here is basically the get content one it will get what you're passing as body of the request then we are telling here our RCADF one that it should parse this using the format it could detect here, basically the name. And we're using the fake IRE as our base resource for creating what comes next. If it fails, we'll use the main Silex application and use the abort method. Abort basically means don't do anything, return this code and pass some message. Okay, this is the only thing that changes from the collection service to this one. We have to create a PCDM object here instead of a PCDM collection. So instead of adding PCDM collection, as you can see in, if you go to the uh, GitHub page, we will add a PCDM object. So we are creating a new resource inside our graph using this fake IRI and we're saying this one is of type PCDM object. Okay. <clears throat> and then we check if the user, uh, the final user, already passed something that has an FO or ESL has URN. These are two predicates we're using to basically give these resources a UID so we can match it back in the, in the triple store instead of using the full path. So each of these resources will have inside two predicates that point to the same UID. Uh, the old one, the NFO, which is a legacy one, and the new one is still has URL. Don't care about this, still copy. And what we'll do here, we have a list like this get literal. We will add to the same graph a new resource to the same fake IRE, so, so the same subject. ESL has URN. URN UID and the UID. If the one that called the service doesn't provide a UID, UID, we will create one for him. And then we will use this injected UID generator to generate a version 4 one. Nothing strange there. And then we add this one 
water resource and ready. At the end of this, once we are ready for this, we have to replace our fake IRE with, again, this nothing. Because Fedora 4 needs this stuff. So we take this fake IRE we created, we replace this one with nothing, and then we serialize back to Turtle. And what do what we do here is basically reuse the old services. If you remember, we had like this main, this basic down low low level service named Islander Resource one, the resource service. So we are telling here, hey, give me the path for that resource service, Islander Resource, and we invoke internally. I create here a request, a create request. We create a new request that will be of type post. We'll pass every cookie, we'll pass everything that we got originally, and we'll pass as body of this what we created before, the PCDM object RDF. Then we will reset the TX one. If we someone passed us our transaction, we will use that. We will define that this request, internal one, will be of type text turtle because we said here it's being serialized as turtle. And then we will make a sub request. Sub requests are very pretty cool because we don't have to wait for them, they don't interrupt the whole routing system. They do an internal request and you get something back from that. So we will here handle that sub request and if the return of that request is 201 means that it was created we will now render a direct container using tweak using as input the location of the last created resource. Let me show you where this trick is. Well, this is very simple. This template has everything we need to create our RDF resource. We have this one, a LDP direct container. The membership resource, that one, will be replaced with the location of the previous one created. And we're telling that everything that goes into that direct container will have this relation, PCDM has file which is very simple. That's all. So we render this. There it is. And this will be our direct container RDF. And then we, we used again a sub request. In this case, a put one. There we wrote plus the ID, put, and everything again. But in this case, instead of relying on a path arbitrary one that is built by Fedora, we will say, hey, I want this indirect container, direct container, sorry, to be named files. And well, you don't have to care about this. This is again something we, we manage internally. And finally, we just sent this whole resource to the Alandora resource controller using put and files. And if this is created, means we created two different resources in one. We get the headers and we add new headers to the response and that gets back to the user. 
So we're get, getting back to the user the link of the recently the PCDM object created. That's the, that one. And we also get him back a link to this direct container where he can keep adding new stuff, basically binary images. That will be the same URL plus slash files. And this is all. And if it just fails, you just abort. So I will make a brief pause here. I fully understand this is not something you can like to just see it online so fast and so and so simple. And more if I'm going one line at a time. But if you look at this and if you compare this, give me a second again, to for example the collection service, which has the same configuration inside source, it has a provider, it has a controller, the controller for the collection service is this one, make this bigger, it has like 80% of the same code, it already has solved the basic needs like creating multiple resources from one call and what we are just swapping is one is members, the other is files, the other was PCDM collection, and this one is PCDM object. And that is all. And so our next task, and I'm not going to do this here, but I will publish this so you can see how this works, is to add a new public method that adds an image to this files endpoint. This one, the add image, was already defined in the image service provider. I would go to the end. If you look, the one we just saw, the whole code, is image controllers post slash image ID. This is the UID of the base resource where we're creating this object. And then image controller create. And this new one, the missing one, is Islandor image controller add image. So the next step will be basically to having when we already have a PCDM object that includes inside a files that one direct container to add a new file to it. We have different approaches on doing this and I will let you explore basically during this week uh, my method I will publish this so you can uh, look at this uh, sorry we'll go back to this mm -mm -mm. where do I have this that one so this files and this PCDM object were created using one world we first created the PCDM object, we got back a response, and when this was true, this direct container files was created. So now we have a new endpoint that is this UID slash files that can accept different binary files. So we could add a way of defining which one are you going to use as preservation master file, which one are you going to use as service file, and which one are you going to use as thumbnail image. One way of handling this is like to add a new header that allows the user to define, hey, this one will be the preservation master file and will be named up, or this one will be named medium size, or this one will be named TN. The other one is just give this any name and discern using the predicates. So when I want to get the master, I get everything that is inside files that has a use preservation master file, which is very good because you don't have to rely on these naming conventions. And the other way is just to add one 
always the preservation master file and let another service handle the derivative stuff. So, and this is where camel can become handy. And that was the reason in the last lesson I said, no, microservices won't replace completely camel. The reason is, using microservices, we are, even when doing a lot of async stuff, we're not being completely async. If I have to wait until the binary is being processed and uploaded, and then built using the same PHP service, a derivative, for example, for the medium size or for the thumbnail, Sorry again. Oh man. Hey Diego? Yeah. I got lost. I don't know why. We're at time. Oh, sorry. Okay. I speak too much, I think. I just wanted to show you something and I will pass that somewhere. So you can look at this. Okay, this is a very simple camel route that handles. Yeah, this is uh, a simple camel route that handles derivative creation. You can look at this. It, you just need to add it directly to Caraf. And what it does is it waits for something that is binary that is JPH to be added to Fedora 4. If it gets added, it just downloads it, builds using image magic a thumbnail, and makes a sibling of that directly into Fedora 4. This approach can be used to build mostly any type of derivative you can think of. And I think after playing with this, this is the way I would like to have things going on internally, so you would, don't have to wait until something is done, and you don't lock PHP, you just upload something, and when it's done, it gets processed. So, yeah, we're on time. If someone has questions, ideas, or have to leave, it's okay. And thank you very much. This was a complex lesson. All right. <clears throat> Looks like no questions. Um, so thank you very much again, Diego. Uh, this was excellent, as always. Thank you, Bill, for being so so. We'll all reconvene and. Two weeks.